Um, good day, everyone. I trust that you are all well. Um, Sulu Fellows Khatwi, I'm the Sign Language Interpreter at the University of Basel Natal, and I'm based at Edgewood Campus. Um, I'll be serving as your program director for the seminar along with my colleague, Ms. Londe Kanchangase, who is also um, a, a fellow sign language interpreter here at the University of Kozul Natal. And Londe is based at Howard College campus. Welcome to the third annual South African Sign Language Interpreters Seminar, which will focus on the theme, the evolving role of the South African Sign Language Interpreter in higher education, reality versus established practice. Um, now, as attendees are still logging in now, uh, we'll quickly run through some of the key points of the house rules for the seminar, which has been sent to all attendees uh, via email and are currently being shared on your screen. I trust that you can see them. Um, please ensure that you are named appropriately upon joining this session to aid in smooth coordination of the event of this virtual platform for presenters and panelists. Do you have anything to add to the discussion or, or sign from it? Please indicate this by raising your hand. Wait to be prompted by the program director before unmuting your mic or turning your video on and making your contribution. Um, if you require a CSL interpreter, please ensure that you're on a gallery view SASL interpreting will be provided by two interpreters for the duration of the seminar. So you will need to pin their window. These are labeled SASL interpreter one and SASL interpreter two. Uh, you will need to change the pinned window when a changeover occurs between these two interpreters. And again, if another SASL user is sharing, you will likewise need to change over and pin the individual window. Therefore, when you ask a question or maybe you add to the discussion, please uh, use the hand icon and wait a few minutes before you start signing so that other SASL users can see your video. Um, if it happens that you require subtitling, please activate this a machine generated closed caption by clicking on the CC button for live transcription. Although not always 100% accurate, this will help you to follow what is being said. Um, we also have our technical team that will be available on the chat area to assist wherever possible. And also you may contact, um, you may actually use um, WhatsApp to contact my colleague, Ms. Londi Wemdaba on 073-850-9623. She will assist via mobile cell phone as well. Um, I believe that some people are still logging in. Maybe we can give them at least five minutes before we can start with uh, today's program.
Yeah, we can just wait for some few minutes for people who are still logging in. So we'll start at, at 10 minutes past 12, then we'll start with our today's program. Um, we are going to start in the next one minute, one minute, so let's wait for a minute again. Okay. I want to believe that everybody managed to log in. Uh, so now you're going to start with our program for the day. Up first, I would like to invite Professor Mazibuko to deliver the opening address on behalf of the University of KwaZulu-Natal. I would like first to introduce her. Uh, Professor Mazibuko, is the Interim Senior Director of Student Services at the University of KwaZulu-Natal. She is also an Emeritus Professor at UKZN since 2014. She served as a Professor and Deputy Vice-Chancellor at UKZN and as a Vice-Chancellor at the University of Zululand. Prof Mazibuku published extensively on social welfare social policy, women in leadership, and the major of the ex-University of Durban, Westville, and University of Natal. Welcome, Professor Mazbuku. Yeah. Thank you, our program director, Mr. Cholofelo Sehwazui. Uh, good day, everyone. 
on behalf of the vice chancellor, our vice chancellor and principal, Professor Nana Poku, and the University of KwaZulu Natal, it gives me a great pleasure to welcome the panelists and participants in this seminar. It is a great honor and privilege to welcome everyone to this important webinar on the evolving role of SASLI in higher education, reality versus established practice. A very special welcome to all participants and it is heartwarming to see a diverse uh, community of educators, practitioners, students, uh, specialists, linguists, interpreters featuring so prominently on the panel discussions. A warm welcome to the multidisciplinary uh, and expert teams from the different parts of, this, of South Africa and the world, interpreters uh, from the Parliament of the Republic of South Africa, provincial legislators, tertiary education institutions of higher learning. I noticed um, it, we have uh, guest participants from DUT, University of Free of State, VETS, UKZN, and University of Cape Town. And also the basic education uh, sector, the TVET uh, sector, technical and vocational education and training, uh, disability support units, interpreting services, uh, facilitators of our panel discussions, postgraduate students, the UKZN organizing a committee, and all uh, formations supporting and advancing the cause of SASLI. Also, in our midst, maybe the staff are from UKZN, students from UKZN, and distinguished guests are present. Our keynote speaker for this seminar, uh, Ms. Asanda Kato, is no stranger to the sector. A warm and special welcome to you, Madam. One is looking forward to your keynote address, which will assist all of us to understand the state of SASLI, the aspirations and needs of the deaf people in the schooling system, higher education, workplaces, and the communities generally. Your wise words, connectedness to the community of the deaf and experience will set the tone for this important seminar. The theme and activities of the seminar gives one an impression of a community of practitioners, professionals and activists who are not locked into deficit models, but are advancing an inclusive, safe and transformative environment for and with the deaf learners and students. Your unique and appropriate ability to engage wisely and confidently with the deaf learner, student and public is a strength for mutual engagement that is the deaf and the various publics. This uniqueness and skill to engage with the deaf is something that planners and decision makers in basic and higher education must utilize to produce and retain and secure the appropriate infrastructures and human capital to ensure inclusivity, participation, access and success of um, deaf learners and students. The support required for deaf learners and students is labor intensive. They require both human and technical support. For now, skilled interpreters and the packages that they come with are a priority. Seminars of this nature generate important recommendations that inform basic and higher education of how to best invest in and support students, learners and staff. As a community of practitioners, professionals and activists, you take the lead, you demonstrate attuned leadership. Your voice and intellect are critical, particularly because of what you stand for. The thematic uh, a threat for the seminar aligned to the evolving role of the of, uh, SASLI in higher education is globally, as you know, sign language has historically been oppressed. In the South African context, the sign language is regarded as a developing language and as a result, academic interpreting is a relatively novel field and the deaf community has had minimal exposure to concepts and nuances. 
This seminar aims to address uh, the following thema uh, thematic uh, threat, uh, threats, uh, the evolving role of SASLI in higher education reality versus established practice. The main areas of focus at this seminar from what I've, I've shared are one, the challenges faced by deaf learners in transitioning from basic education to a higher education academic environment. Less than 3% of the deaf learners successfully meet the requirements to enter institutions of higher learning. Once placed in a significantly demanding higher education academic environment, they often face several challenges, not with their standing access to interpreting services at a, higher at a higher level. A distinct lack of awareness with respect to the linguistic barriers faced by these students, by the academic community at large in this environment, and sometimes inconsistencies deliver or in inconsistent delivery of their uh, interpreting services leave deaf students significantly vulnerable. Note, they are not uh, foolish. They, are, they become significantly vulnerable. The seminar hopefully will highlight some of the challenges faced by the learners and students and explore strategies that would aid in achieving successful transition and integration into the mainstream higher education environment and in life generally. Secondly, the evolution of the interpreting profession in higher education. Contrary uh, to the established practice, sign language interpreting in post-secondary settings require a flexible approach due to the sociolinguistic and sociocultural um, uh, factors that are within the discourse and or environment. The most silent issue affecting deaf students and interpreters include the underdevelopment, uh, underdeveloped academic sign language equivalent terminology, the minimal number of deaf students accessing higher education, the insufficient pool of interpreters and the lack of interpreters uh, tra uh, trained uh, for this specialized uh, field. Here then I see your experience, uh, strong ethics, intellect playing a significant uh, role. Thirdly, the development of a national strategy for delivering higher education interpreting services. Cognizance of the established sign language interpre interpreting practice, the seminar hopefully seeks to generate in-depth and broad spectrum deliberations to develop key strategies that will significantly drive the implementation of a more dynamic sales service delivery in post-secondary uh, settings. These key strategic uh, strategies will be centered around reasonable accommodation required um, uh, for to best support the deaf students' ac academic and social needs, how to cultivate a higher institution that will best prepare the student to be autonomous in order to cope with the workplace demands post tertiary and the establishment of academic sign language interpreter training programs. South African Sign Language South was recognized by the Department of Basic Education in 2018 as an official home language. It was included as a metric subject in the 2018 National Senior Certificate exams, where previously the university as points could not visibly allocated for an additional language, which saw these learners enter higher education. We then saw these, um, um, uh, uh, sorry, learners en entering higher education through the access programs since uh, that year. In 2020, uh, the University of KwaZulu Natal saw uh, two first entry uh, at their students access the main B ed uh, program, a Bachelor of Education having completed SLS and English in the 2019 metric examinations. Currently, the University of KwaZulu-Natal has 11 deaf students registered across three campuses, that is Peter Marisbeck, Edgewood, and Howard College. And we have our first postgraduate student registered for an, an honors a program in 2021. UKZN's SL services have been significantly progressive 
with the transition to a more digital framework for the delivery of the services since the emergency of the pandemic in 2020. May I add that institutions of higher education will be able to provide necessary and appropriate infrastructures and other capacities, mainly because of your inputs. An inclusive and transformative environment is being cult uh, cultivated at uh, the University of KwaZulu Natal and other sister universities. Hopefully, this has made uh, it uh, the preferred destination for deaf students in the province. Furthermore, the seminar will address issues pertinent to develop, uh, developing broad strategies for the delivery of self services nationwide. Your attuned and transformative leadership extends to the management and decision may, uh, making leadership in basic education and higher education and training. I would like to end my welcome with this quote. It comes uh, from a book by Dr. Ruel Koza uh, in 2011. It's in Sitsonga. Zalama Yamunu Imabogo, which means if one works, one will reap results. Prosperity is in your hard work. One remains optimistic and confident that the three days that you are investing in this seminar will yield results that will shape and inform Sal's role in education. Welcome to UKZN, Siana Mugela, and all the best during your seminar. Thank you, Program Director. Uh, thank you for the welcoming, Professor Masbuko. Um, we'll now move to the next segment of the program. I will call upon our keynote speaker, who is Ms. Asanda Kachwa. I'm just going to give a brief, brief uh, background of Ms. Kachwa. Uh, Ms. Kachwa is the language practitioner currently employed as a sign language interpreter at the Eastern Cape Provincial Legislature. Uh, she is serving as a chairperson at the Eastern Cape Provincial Language Committee, the ECPLC. Uh, the ECPLC committee is responsible for the promotion and development of all provincial languages, which are Xhosa, English, Afrikaans, Susutu, Nama of the Khoisan, and SASL. So yeah, welcome, Ms. Katwa. Over to you. Uh, good morning, or good rather, good afternoon, everyone. I hope I am audible. The challenge with online presentations is you don't get um, quick and instant feedback. So it becomes a little bit challenging. Uh, it, it gives me great pleasure to be part of this year's uh, seminar termed the evolving role of South African sign language interpreters in higher education reality versus established practice. In particular, because the University of KwaZulu-Natal is quite progressive as far as promoting, developing and use of indigenous languages, in particular is Zulu. And what they have done in ensuring that Isuzulu has developed, I hope other, institutions of higher learning uh, will, will take a note of that. I haven't started my presentation. I'm just giving a preamble before my talk. Uh, Prof Mazibuko and esteemed guests, please forgive me if I seem to be a little bit all over the place in my presentation. 
perhaps at times I will sound like a, a broken record because we know that our institutions of higher learning overall in South Africa are not doing enough as far as the development of South African sign language as a language and South African sign language interpreting as a profession. Before I go to my presentation, let me further extend my special gratitude to both the Student Services and Disability Support Unit led by uh, Professor Mazibuko and Dr. Shubai for inviting me and to be part of this um, presentation or seminar. Can we go to the first slide? Okay, so I can control it. Now, the theme of today or of these three days is quite simple. The, the evolution of South African Sign Language interpreting reality vis a vis practicing. The, the current practices that are out there. I think it is important for us to start at the beginning. What is the basic role of an interpreter? A basic role of an interpreter is simply to understand one, that language is a fundamental basic human right. In particular, South African sign language is a fundamental and basic human right for a deaf person. Now that becomes a challenge because hearing people tend to take that right or that basic right for granted. Now the basic role of a South African sign language interpreter is not to merely take from one language to the other or transfer from one spoken language into so SASL or from one spoken, to, uh, one spoken language to another spoken language. It is more than that. It is also to bridge the gap caused by language variants or differences in languages. And importantly, to bridge the different cultures because we cannot, we can never divorce language and culture. Each language, be it Isi Zulu, Isi Kosa, Isi Sotho, Africans, English, and South African Sign Language, each language is paired with culture. Therefore, you can never be a good or successful and a proud interpreter, South African Sign Language interpreter if you don't know the two cultures that you are working in. Yes, I, I do, I, I am aware that um, in, in South Africa, we work as South African Sign Language interpreters with basic three languages. In my case, it could be Isikosa, South African Sign Language and English. With that said, you still need to fully understand the languages, these three languages, with the paired cultures. Now that assists in your, in your work, in your daily work and interpreting as you are in the field. Now, understanding those uh, cultures, there is a deeper understanding that you need to, to, to have further. We have subcultures we have to have an understanding of the workplace culture. That becomes my role as an interpreter to constantly bridge the gap. Because remember, we're working with deaf people or the deaf community or deaf community members and hearing members. So we will have to constantly um, manipulate, so to speak, or manage the culture, the workplace culture, 
you have to have an understanding of the street culture. You have to have um, an understanding now what COVID has brought uh, to us, online culture. You have to have a, a better understanding of online culture. I see on the uh, notes, uh, on the chat box that uh, some deaf members are unable to see the sign language interpreter. Uh, I can see the interpreter from where I am, but I'm reading from the charts that some deaf people are unable to see the interpreter. And there is- Asanda, the is uh, yeah. Asanda it, it does appear that uh, the sign language interpreter video is not spotlighted. So we're just trying to sort that out. It was there, but it appears to have moved off. All right, all right. Uh, should I, should we wait? Uh, right, I suppose we must wait. Thank you for your patience. We're still trying to sort it out. Okay. Uh, Ty, can I ask you to please stop sharing so I can just see if there are any settings that uh, might need to be adjusted? Okay. Note. Um. 
Uh, Ty, can you share again? And uh, Sandra, let's see if we sort it out. Okay, it, it seems like um, there is some response from the audience that they now can see the interpreter. Correct, it looks like it's sorted out. Yes, thank you very much. Um, if I can just retract a little bit on the, looking at our theme, I want us to look at the very basic role of a South African sign language interpreter or a sign language interpreter in general. It is to understand that, firstly, to understand that a language is a basic human right. And that human right, uh, did we lose the interpreter again? Not, okay. That human right seems to be um, taken for granted by hearing people. The role of a South African Sign Language Interpreter goes beyond just to relay from one language to another. An interpreter has to understand, fully understand the cultures of the languages or the communities that they are working with. Um, okay. Okay, I'm asked to pause because they cannot see the interpreter anymore. Uh, Asanda, it is visible. I do have your gallery view and I can see the interpreter as well, just above you. Oh, okay. I, I was just reading I've, them. I just typed a message. Yeah, I've just typed a message for people to put their, uh, their systems on gallery view and to hide all non-video participants. So only the two videos show up. That's yours and the interpreters. Okay, I'm reading that in a webinar setting, gallery view is disabled for participants, thus no option to switch views. Okay, it seems like some people don't have the option to go to gallery. Okay, we do apologize. I'm gonna log out and log back in as a panelist, uh, as an attendee, so I can see what the um, attendees are seeing, Asanda. So just give me a minute.
Sorry. Okay, cool. All right. Seems like everyone can now see the interpreter uh, nicely. Thank you. Now, once again, I was briefly going through the basic role of the sign language interpreter that uh, language is a fun fundamental basic human right. A fundamental basic human right, not just for South African sign language. Sign language is a fundamental basic human right for any language. But in particular, for South African sign language or any languages or, or sign languages, hearing people or anyone who can hear, take that right, take that basic right for granted. Now, going back to the role, the basic role of the South African sign language interpreter, it is more than just passing one language to another. It is also to bridge the, the communication and language gap and the language and the culture that is paired with that language. And it goes a little bit beyond than the language, the working languages and the working cultures. An interpreter has to have a, a, a basic understanding of the work culture have to have a basic understanding of different subcultures in the environment that they are operating in. We have seen and we know that every time there's a misunderstanding, a miscommunication, and it, as far as culture is concerned, there is bound to be a clash. It might, it, sometimes it presents itself as a clash of personalities, because in my culture, we do things this way. And that becomes the role of the interpreter to ensure that there's a, a, they neutralize the environment in an interpreting uh, uh, situation. Uh, second last <clears throat> on basic role of the interpreter is to ensure that they provide quality interpreting. I'm not going to go into detail about what is quality or, or not. Uh, I'll touch a little bit later on. And they abide by the ethics, by the ethics. Can we go to the next slide? Okay. Now what I've done when I was given the theme for this seminar, I broke down the theme into two sub-themes, the evolving role of the South African Sign Language Interpreter in higher education. Is it, is it evolving or not? Um, I was kind of stuck by the word evolve. And because English is my third language, you know, you always have challenges and you, have, you always have to, uh, consult. I consulted um, a number of dictionaries to give me a, a proper explanation on what evolve means. And what I found, I've quoted two dictionaries from Cambridge Dictionary was to develop gradually. And the Merriam Webster Dictionary gave me the following explanation that to evolve, to change develop slowly, often to a better, a more complex and more advanced state. So it is the evolving role of a South African sign language interpreter in, in higher education, is it evolving? Is it not evolving? So are we evolving to a more complex, more better, more advanced state? That shall be answered perhaps at the, at the end of this presentation or at the end of this seminar. Next slide, please. Now, is the role of the South African Sign Language Interpreter evolving? Yes or no? 
Round about 20, 30, even 10 years ago, the career paths of deaf people was, uh, was stagnant or was limited rather. And the, it was quite predictable. 20, 30 years ago, you could always predict that when you see a well-supported or, or an inspiring or inspiring deaf uh, learner, they want to become teachers or they are pushed to become teachers. So as time moved from 20, 30 years ago, compared to now, we seem to have more qualified teachers than in other professions. Now compare that with the need and the type of sign language interpreters that was needed 20, 30 years ago compared to now. Currently where we are, we are aware at the stage where deaf people are more aware of their rights. Deaf people are taking up space. They know what they want and they are pursuing different career paths. So the, the opportunities now are opening up a little bit more. Now the question is, that requires that the institutions of higher learning to meet that demand. That becomes the second question. Are our institutions of higher learning meeting the evolving, um, the, the evolving career path of deaf people? Are our institutions of higher learning equipping our South African sign language interpreters correctly to match the demand. Secondly, are uh, our South African sign language interpreters upgrading their education or are they set? Those are the questions that we need to ask ourselves. Next slide, please. Now, as I mentioned two slides ago, that I kind of break my presentation towards two, uh, two themes. The first theme was around whether South African Sign Language Interpreting is it evolving or not. Now, the second uh, sub theme is the reality of the South African, South African Sign Language Interpreter and the established practice, practices. Now the reality to answer that question, the reality now is we have a lot of sign language interpreters that are uneducated. Within the, the institutions of higher learning, you will have undergraduates, learners, deaf learners from various schools, and you will have an interpreter that has a standard eight at most will have metric to interpret for that. Or have a deaf learner, a, a deaf student rather, who is doing masters, an interpreter who is not educated or trained or skilled to meet the, the demands, the academic demands of that student. Secondly, the reality currently that we have bias as far as employing asylum interpreters within our institution of learning. You see that it depends on what your spending looks like or how your spending is or who you are associated with or if you are body body and certain deaf people or certain deaf uh, community members, then you will get employed or you will get a recommend, uh, recommendations for employment. But if you have a wrong spending, you don't get um, employed. So those are the, the practices. Another challenge as well are the budgetary constraints. The, Situation might uh, be forward thinking, might be progressive, 
might want to employ a whole court of learners. Uh, I'm sorry, Asanda. I think you muted yourself. We can't hear you. Yeah. No. I actually didn't touch anything. <laughs> okay. On budgetary constraints, and then you will see at times that institutions of higher learning will say, yeah, we'll, you are, we are interested in employing interpreters, um, but we don't have money. And we have seen that a, a, a student will apply a year in advance, two years in advance, but they will still have challenges of not getting in interpreters when they get to get to the institution of higher learning. Another reality of South African Sign Language interpreters that are in the institutions of higher learning, are, there's an expectation for them to multitask. They are expected to interpret. They are expected to to ensure that there's a higher um, uh, enrollment of deaf learners. They are expected to to ensure that these learners or these students pass. That unfair multitasking that the institution is expecting from the this interpreter, and it almost becomes a norm. Um, and also, lastly, I say I said that a sign language interpreter will have many masters. If I am employed by a, the University of UKZN, I do I become loyal to my employer? Do I become loyal to the deaf person I'm interpreting for? or do I become loyal to the deaf leaders outside the institution, many masters, and that also create confusion within the interpreting space for a sign language interpreter within institutions of higher learning. Next slide, please. Now, in my opening statement, I have asked to be forgiven uh, Professor Mazbuko uh, by saying that perhaps I'm starting by going to the end when I said, when I'm putting an emphasis that our institutions of higher learning are not doing enough as far as training uh, and teaching South African Sign Language and training interpreters. A lot of literature is available um, out there that shows what, what works or what should work, what kind of program, working programs are, are relevant, are best for sign language interpreting. For many years, when we started sign language interpreting program, we insisted, we almost insisted solely on training our interpreters only on simultaneous interpreting. And just recently, now literature is showing us that even when you want to produce simultaneous sign language interpreters, your starting point should not be at simultaneous interpreting. Rather, it should be at consecutive interpreting. Uh, I think I'm jumping my slides. It should be at consecutive interpreting. And when you develop your program, it should, uh, it should have a similar form. You should have a program for beginners where you introduce, um, you know, just pre-interpreting skills such as interlingual and intralingual skills you know, you have your interpreters, you ensure that they master their mono, monolingual skills. They have full competence 
in one language, in their home language. Um, because we have seen and we know that reading, writing, and speaking a language, one, does not make you an interpreter. Reading, writing, and speaking a language is not enough. One has to have it, uh, competence where they are able to manipulate, so to speak, a language, one language, your home language. You must have your ability to manipulate a language enough and have numerous equivalents before you jump to the second language, before you learn other languages. So language competency in interlingual training further means the ability to understand this, the source language nuances. That was uh, written by Roberts in 1995 already. Because they have seen that when interlingual skills are well developed, processing effort is much less because we know in simultaneous interpreting, um, the process cognitively, the process, uh, cognitive process, there's it, it, too much effort um, that, that happens. Now, the second programs that you, the second program that you, you can introduce will be for practicing interpreters. Maybe interpreters who have been interpreting actively for between three to 10 years. You have that program that speaks to their needs. And lastly, you have a two-prone program that focuses to develop uh, professional uh, skill maintenance, for skill maintenance. One, it is for experienced, but not qualified interpreters. They need to have a tailor-made program for them. And also our institution have to develop programs for qualified and experienced sign language interpreters. Currently, our institutions of higher learning uh, don't have really structured and relevant interpreting programs. And as, as a result, most of our interpreter programs do not equip sign language interpreters can go to the next slide. Yes, we do have interpreters that go around with a beautiful university certificates, but they cannot really do the job. Now, what is in the South African Sign Language Interpreter curriculum within our institutions of learning? I've mentioned this um, a little bit before that um, we need to have programs that introduce consecutive interpreting prior to simultaneous interpreting skills, even though you are training simultaneous interpreting. Um, uh, sorry, sorry to disturb you, Asanda. Can we please check if all uh, SASL users can see the interpreters? They just swapped now. Can we check with them if they can see interpreter? Yes, they seem to be fine. Okay, okay. thank you. Okay, um, as, as researched uh, by Russell in 2002 and by other authors, there's a lot of literature that suggests that consecutive interpreting strategies must be learned first before simultaneous interpreting. And that uh, doing that provides both the foundation, a solid foundation and variable starting point to, to approach interpreting in a proper way. However, next slide, we do not seem to put uh, enough emphasis on the quality of sign language interpreters. The few, institutions of higher learning that have interpreting programs, they seem to be in a rush to, to produce numbers. We, we're just producing numbers. There is, there is no quality in the output. So those are the one of the things that 
uh, we need to, to have a look at. Now, what is the, mini, the missing step in our interpreting, in, in our interpreter training program? Uh, simultaneous interpreter training should not be done in isolation. Um, all right, should not be done in isolation. Now the role of translation, I, I cannot emphasize this enough. The role of translation in interpreting education should be the first step, right? And you will see literature again, it is very clear that um, it, it is evident that we do have a forgotten step. A lot of our interpreters who are simultaneous interpreters are not trained as, um, as consecutive interpreters. Can we go to the next slide? Now, just before we go to the next slide, it is important to to also emphasize that when you are a trained simultaneous interpreter, you must remember that you have to possess those consecutive interpreting skills because simultaneous interpreting, um, you know, cognitively, it, it is very strenuous. And consecutive interpreting gives one an opportunity to produce quality and accurate interpreting. Now, any confident and trained interpreter will know when to use, when to switch roles, when to use, um, when to move from simultaneous and from simultaneous to consecutive interpreting. But we seem to have a fear of saying, I'm a sign language interpreter, I can only do simultaneous interpreting, or I should only do simultaneous interpreting, which, which is not always fact. So when we only focus on simultaneous interpreting, these are the different errors that we have witnessed uh, as it was identified by um, Ukusmal in 1994. In 1995, he has listed uh, a few errors and he had written also, or he has researched uh, their the waiting as well, as far as their seriousness and the consequences of the errors that sign language interpreters make while they are interpreting. He talks of the error in the comprehension stage, which is a very serious uh, error that we make as sign language interpreters. Normally, uh, the error in the comprehension stage happens when we're not familiar with the topic or when you are dealing with someone with a very heavy accent. So you, you'll make that error. And also we'll have an error in the transfer stage, which is also serious or is weighed as serious, is when an interpreter understands the source language, right? You can hear, you understand, but you don't have enough uh, tools, you don't have enough vocabulary to transfer correctly into target language, that is transfer stage. So you'll also have pronunciation and register stage. Here, it, how it's weighed by Kusmal is, it's not really serious unless the mispronunciation changes the message. Now, the fourth one is omission. What we also notice is as experienced interpreters, when you are work with a no, when you work with a, a novice and you ask them to assess your, your skills, and they will say, um, no, everything is fine. And you know that you've made mistakes. Or they will pick up a mistake or omission that you have done, and they will not know why you've done that omission. Usually, experienced interpreters leave out information deliberately due to fatigue, and they just select, the, the cognitively, the brain will select what it feels is, is crucial. However, 
Novice interpreters leave out information due to failure to comprehend concepts. You see, it, it depends on one's experience. You'll find sometimes errors by addition. An interpreter will add way too much information as a way to fill in fillers. They don't want to look like they are not signing. So they over explain or over, they become a little bit flowery and over explain. In education setting, that can be acceptable. But in legal setting, that's lethal because it will come back and, and bite the accused if you are interpreting for the accused. Lastly, there's many more, but this is, these are just the ones that I've chose. Uh, inadequate language proficiency. This one is the inability to correctly predict language patterns. Language, uh, the inability to, to, to correctly predict language patterns can be very strenuous if you don't understand the language. If you don't know, ladies and gentlemen, if you don't know ladies follows gentlemen, it becomes very tedious and tiring for you as an interpreter. That is why it becomes important for the interpreter to fully understand the languages they are working in. Also, there are times under uh, errors still, there are times when the question is repeated to a deaf person, right? And then the response of a deaf person is by the elaborate instead of repeating the question that they were asked. So when that happens, the interpreter can evaluate by the response of a deaf person that, okay, can identify, okay, I've made an error here. That is why a deaf person is operating instead of repeating the question. Next slide. Now, the errors that I've mentioned are just some of the errors in, that can form part of the curriculum as we are producing um, uh, interpreter, interpreters, sign language interpreters. Oh, what is uh, discouraging our young sign language interpreters? Lack of resources. We don't have enough um, resources to teach and train our sign language interpreters. Um, I would like to encourage all our institutions. There, there is so much that, that can be researched. There is so much that still needs to be done. And there's a huge uh, shortage of role models. When I started in um, role models, all. 21 years later, there's only there seem to be so few. And mentorship, I cannot emphasize a mentorship enough. There is no interpreter, any interpreter, every interpreter must have a mentor, especially in, in our field. Uh, number four, there seems to be an unhealthy competition amongst sign language interpreters, even within the same institution. Just unhealthy competition. I don't know where it's coming from. And it's damaging the profession and it's damaging the services that we are rendering for deaf people. Sign language interpreting is an un unfamiliar territory. No one seems to know what they are doing. No one seems to know uh, whether they are going left or right. So it's still a baby uh, infants. We are still in infancy stage as far as the development of the profession is, is concerned. And lastly, uh, I've mentioned a lot, a lot of favoritism can be, can be very discouraging for our sign language interpreters who are young and upcoming. Next slide, please. Now, before we go to uh, recommendations, I would like to quickly mention a few ethical dilemmas that young sign language interpreters experience. 
there are times when a sign language interpreter is employed by an institution of higher learning are expected by their employer to ensure that the, the deaf learners or deaf students pass. And we have seen Salah interpreter create opportunities for learners or students to cheat. Because in a class or in a lecture room, is the only person who have access to sign language is myself and the student. And they create opportunities to cheat because I'm under pressure from my institution, I'm employed to produce more quality interpreters. And we forget that we are not teachers. We, we, not, we don't teach. So why do I feel I have the responsibility to ensure that this learner is, um, passes? My responsibility is to ensure that I pro provide quality interpreting. Uh, those are some of the ethical um, challenges. And my recommendations will be all of our institutions to, to ensure that South African sign language, sign language interpreters are qualified and skilled. To employ qualified and skilled interpreters. And that institutions of higher learning to ensure these interpreters get support in a form of a mentor. And our institutions of higher learning must know and understand the role and responsibilities of an interpreter. And should be sensitive to the ethical duty. Um, Ms. Castro just, uh, just got disconnected. I think maybe we can just wait for a minute. Yeah, I am here. Uh, I'm not sure if I am audible. You are audible. We can hear you. Oh, it's my slide that is not showing. Oh, all right. Okay, just the recommendations that the institution, our institutions of higher learning should be sensitive to the, the ethical duty of the interpreter to the profession. We, we understand that they have to be, uh, they have the duty ethically to the institution, but also they have a duty to be uh, responsible to the profession and develop, please, I cannot emphasize this enough, develop a relevant sign language interpreter curricula or programs and respect interpreting prefer preferences of deaf students. Um, develop also bridging programs for deaf students. Our deaf students are coming from deaf schools and there's no deaf person who was born with the knowledge of knowing how to use an interpreter. More than 95% of the, the students that come into your institutions don't know how to use Um, okay, your, your lecturers uh, need to understand that as a sign language interpreter, we are not there to steal the limelight from you as a lecturer. We're here to ensure that both of us, we, we produce quality students. And quarterly short programs for interpreters such as this one that we are having today. Thank you very much.
Uh, thank you, Ms. Kasha, for your beautiful presentation. Um, we are now going to move to our next item, which is a video presentation from the UKZ and Sasli team, represented by Ms. Nogutula Kumalo, um, who is a sign language interpreter based at Howard College and also a chair for this, uh, for this year's seminar. So yeah, welcome, Noctula. Uh, greetings. Greetings to you all, uh, the attendees, uh, the panelists, and uh, the speaker. Um, the following video, uh, the year 2020 has brought a sudden shift uh, towards uh, remote interpreting, and this has impacted and innovated uh, the sign language interpreting profession. Um, the following uh, video presentation demonstrates how we, as uh, sign language interpreters from uh, UKZN, uh, have rendered the service, especially after it has uh, evolved in order uh, to adapt and uh, shift with the new times. Uh, it also demonstrates some of the challenges that we do experience as academic uh, interpreters. Um, the video uh, we play right now, uh, thank you. Please share your computer sounds. Please share computer sound. Hi, I'm sorry. Can you please pause the video, Noctula? There's no sound. Shakila, you can go ahead and run it, please. Uh, apologies, uh, it seems there was no sound on the video.
Disability Support Unit at the University of KwaZulu-Natal support students with diverse disabilities at the institution. These students benefit from specialized services that are aimed at equalizing access to higher education. Deaf students who use South African Sign Language SASL, to communicate also form part of the cohort of students. language interpreters employed in UKZN. Three are based on the Howard College campus, one on the Peter Maritzburg campus, and two are based on the Aged campus. The Disability Support Unit at the University of KwaZulu-Natal support students with diverse disabilities at the institution. These students benefit from specialized services that are aimed at equalizing access to higher education. Deaf students who use South African Sign Language SASL, to communicate also form part of the cohort of students who benefit from these specialized services. Currently, there are six South African Sign Language interpreters employed in UKZN. Three are based on the Howard College campus, one on the Peter Maritzburg campus, and two are based on the Aged campus. Since 2016, the number of deaf students enrolling in UKZN has steadily increased. Currently, there are 11 deaf students registered for academic programs across the three campuses. We have four students based on the Howard College campus in the College of Humanities, four on the Peter Marisbeck campus, with three in the College of Humanities, and one in the College of Law and Management Studies. And three are based on the Aged campus in the College of Humanities School of Education. Hello, my name is Pili Leshezi, and this is my sign name. I'm a second year B. Ed student at the University of Kozul Natal at Ejud campus, located in Pine Town. I was born deaf and started to be exposed to learning sign language at school because my family could not communicate with me using South African Sign Language. It was quite challenging to learn the language, but having supportive friends made things better. I started at a mainstream school, but it was quite challenging because I could not liberate. Then later on, my family took me to Kovulin Levy School for the Deaf, and then later moved to Kwatinto School for the Deaf. My sister assisted me with applying at the University of KwaZulu Natal through the CAO. I prefer online lectures because it allows me to be flexible in terms of doing my assignments and assessments. It also grants me the liberty to study in the comfort of my own space while keeping safe from the pandemic. Hi, my name is Nungazimolo Lembete. I am a second year student currently enrolled for the Bachelor of Social Sciences at the Peter Maritzburg campus. I was born hearing and later became deaf. I then enrolled at the mainstream school and moved to a deaf school where I learned sign language. I don't recall much about my schooling experience until sign language was officialized as the language of instruction.
That is when I started learning about deaf culture and other deaf related matters. I applied to study through the CAO and encountered challenges with registration, but my sister as well as the SRC representative assisted me. Having support structure such as an interpreter, note taker and my sister who is also a student in the same campus made blending in this academic environment easier. I prefer online lectures because I am a shy person and I don't like overcrowded spaces. During on-site lectures, the students and the interpreter usually sit at the front row, with the student facing the lecturer, the interpreter and the screen projector. Academic interpreting involves an extensive number of subjects, fields, languages and dynamics. Interpreters are faced with immense challenges when taking technical or academic language and conveying it into a language that has never been developed or standardized in this particular field. Some of these challenges include words that are technical, idiomatic, or unique to a particular field. The terminology that has been spelled out in SASL because there are no equivalent signs and the use of different words that share similar sign in the same sentence Prior to the virtual instruction, interpreters had minimal access to teaching and learning materials, but with the transition to online learning, it has been a blessing in disguise in terms of ensuring access. Currently, South African Sign Language interpreters are added as teachers on the learning management system, commonly referred to as the UKZN Moodle or Learn 2021, to access all the learning materials prior and post scheduled lectures. Recorded lectures such as PowerPoint presentations with audio are encoded with SASL using a screen recording software. For live lectures, students access the content through Zoom by using the side-by-side -side view feature which displays a split screen of shared content and the interpreter. To mitigate the challenges associated with module terminology difficulties, we have established a sign language terminology bank initiative, which is ongoing. All SASL encoded content is made available in the Cultura interface, which can be accessed through the university's learning management system. A special thanks to the Utah team for collaborating with us to ensure a smooth transition to the new mode of teaching and learning.
Um, thank you, Neptula. I just want to check if all SASL users can see the interpreter. Okay, let's proceed. Uh, our next presentation will be by Ms. Sandile Mugadi, but let me first introduce her before she present. Ms. Sandile Mugadi is the principal sign language interpreter at the Durban University of Technology Deaf Center. Um, welcome, Ms. Mugadi. Over to you now. Um, good afternoon, everyone, and, and all protocols um, observed. I'm not sure if the interpreter is able to hear me. You are audible, Sandile. There's just a slight lag. Oh, okay. My network is a bit unstable. Can I request to switch off my video and um, use the audio um, instead? And I'll, I'll, I'll ask um, Nobutula to beam my presentation on her side. Uh, please go to the first page. Um, okay, um, good afternoon again to everyone, colleagues, SASLEs, um, deaf students, and um, the deaf community at large, and the University of Boston. And thank you very much for inviting me to today's um, seminar. I'm trying to switch off my video, I'm unable to, I'm not sure if I can, okay. Um, I hope everyone is able to hear me. Okay, 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 yes, we, can you. we can hear you. I will, yes, I, I can't seem to see the, the Sazli. Uh, I'm not sure if Spumene is uh, ready. She's ready, please continue. Okay. Um, uh, I will start off with uh, the brief background of where I come from or where we come from with my colleagues. Um, when Sulufelo was introducing me, she said I'm a principal sign language interpreter at the Durban University of Technology. And um, that is not true. I am a SASLI. There is a principal um, or coordinator for our program, and his name is Patrick Dutoit. Um, he was unable to uh, join in today, but I'm just um, a SASLI interpreter at DT. I've been there for like four years now. Um, can you go to the next slide, please? Okay, um, um, at the Durban University of Technology at the Deaf Center, we are housed under the Faculty of Accounting and Informatics. And we, are in, we only interpret for the IT department students who are deaf and only, and we do not offer our services to other um, departments. Um, Another thing that I would like to mention is we do work in collaboration with the disability desk um, at the DUT um, uh, recent camp, um, Steve Biko campus. And what they normally do is they um, 
offer support to deaf students, especially with the issues of residence and um, uh, uh, funding and things like that. And um, we, at our offices, we, we have a, there's a laboratory that we have for deaf students. And we Sorry, Sandile. Uh, Sandile, can you please just hold on for a second? We just need to try and get the interpreter back on. Yeah, I can't seem to see what is happening. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm just... Uh, just one minute. Uh, apologies for that. Okay. No, it's okay. It's okay.
Sandile, can we try again, please? Attendees, um, we're just trying to locate our presenter at this point in time. So just bear with us. Uh, maybe she is having technical issues. It does appear that her signal was weak before uh, we lost the video. She doesn't have any audio, I mean. My apologies, colleagues. I was kicked out. I got kicked out by Zoom. Um, I'm back now. Okay, can I start from the beginning for uh, deaf, uh, for the deaf committee especially because I felt like they lost me when I was starting. Uh, please go to the, the next slide. Uh, please go to the next slide. Okay, um, I'll just uh, proceed. Um, with the a brief background of who we are, we are SASLIs who are based um, at the Durban University of Technology, which is called the DUT. We um, work under the Faculty of Accounting and Informatics. We only interpret, though I know this is uh, sad to say, even as a SASLI, but we, we only interpret for the dear students who are doing IT. We also work in collaboration with the Disability Desk that is based at the Rinsen campus. They offer support especially to uh, the issues of race and um, the funding issues and other issues um, to support the deaf students whilst they are at uh, DUT. Um, our offices are at the Rinsen campus and with, with our um, there's a laboratory for deaf students, and there is our offices based under um, actually one roof. Can you go to the next slide, please? Um, um, as we might, some of us are aware of the issues that are faced by deaf students, especially when they move from basic education to higher education, there is um, an issue with um, uh, English language. And I feel like if you're a SASLI, it's, it's, a, it's better for you to understand the issues that are faced by deaf learners um, in deaf, throughout their deaf education, for you to be able to um, properly um, interpret uh, and also to do your job um, the best way that you can. And uh, there's, there's issues with um, tests and assignments, especially because uh, in the academic setting, lecturers expect deaf students and hearing to write their assignments in proper academic English. 
and there are issues with that uh, at the moment. Um, oh, someone is saying they can't say precisely on screen. Deline, Deline Velemse. Deline? It appears to be okay on my side, but uh, maybe we can see if any other um, attendees cannot see the interpreter. Oh. oh, okay. I think I think others can see the Sesley. Uh, okay. I will I will say this. Um, I feel like there's an, an element of that there's like the deaf learners do not understand what is expected of them when they move to university because they've been in the basic education system for so long and no one really takes their time to explain to them what is expected of them when they move to varsity that no teacher is going to run after them and, and ask them if, if they've done their tasks or if they, they, they've done their work and things like that. Especially with us, we are we are struggling a bit with uh, the term bank in the IT space because um, IT is is a very practical um, subject, especially with programming. Some of the words we end up si um, just spelling and not signing. Some we do have signs, but I feel like we need to like really uh, spend time with the clients, the deaf uh, students and come up with the proper term bank for the IT uh, space. Another issue that is faced by deaf stu students is that hearing students um, are not so eager to work with the deaf uh, students because some of them it's because of ignorance, some they just do not want to. Um, However, they, there's been issues where some are willing to and some, some are not willing to, to, to do that. And can you move to the next slide, please? Um, these are some of the solutions that we've come up as, as a team that we feel uh, do work for us and our clients. In the process, we, we sometimes when you go through uh, your preparation before lectures, you find that um, there is you need to come up with a sign. So you meet with the uh, students, you discuss the signs, you come up with the sign. If if you can't um, be in agreement uh, when it comes to like who we'll use a specific sign, then if the the, the clients prefer you to spell the, the word you, you, you do um, as they say. And um, what, what has worked for us, especially at DUT, is we, we have realized that using proper SASL structure works better than using signed English uh, due to um, the fact that it's, it's easier for the students to understand if you, for the deaf students to understand if you use SASL structure and um, the results are much more um, better than uh, when you use signed English. Um, some of the things that have worked for us is like that most of the academics at DUT do understand that deaf students require extra time when uh, during class or when there's um, tests and um, quizzes, especially online quizzes, they do add extra time, especially now uh, that there's COVID, they, they are willing to, to add extra time for deaf learners, for deaf students. I mean. And another thing is that deaf students um, are willing to um, work with the hearing students and also to uh, bring them into the deaf culture and uh, deaf space and just um, 
to explain what happens in the deaf world. Can we go to the next slide, please? These are some of the challenges that are, that, um, are faced by uh, uh, us at DUT, especially during COVID with the uh, physical lectures, is that it was a, a bit challenging for the students to write down and also pay attention to the interpreter at the same time because they want to look at the interpreter, but they also have to write down. So we 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 had uh, serious issues, but now with online learning, it's it's better because they are able to uh, to um, go back to the recordings uh, later when they do not understand something. And an issue that we, we, we have at DUT is we, we do not have note takers, unlike other universities like UKZN, uh, offer uh, note takers during lectures. Uh, can we go to the next slide? Uh, okay, um, one of the things that has worked for us uh, at DUT is when we are interpreting in uh, during lectures, for because we know that uh, deaf students, um, some of the deaf students' uh, uh, vocabulary of the English language or maybe the, the IT vocabulary is limited. We normally sign the, the, the word first, then we will spell the word, my apologies, we spell the word first, then we sign it to um, boost their vocabulary of the, um, the English language because also it's their right to know what this sign means when you write it down as a word. And um, uh, one of the things that I've seen, I think UCT did this way during um, uh, exams, they would have a scribe for a deaf student, uh, unlike the, the other universities where the deaf student writes down and lecturers would be like, oh, I don't understand what is being said here. I don't understand this English. And what is this? So um, I feel like this is one of the solutions that could work for us. And another thing is that uh, during COVID, especially now that there's recorded lectures on your Moodle and your um, uh, learning management system, there's this lecture. So students can go back to those lectures and watch what was being said when they are preparing for their exams, their quizzes and their tests, or if they just missed anything during lectures. Um, okay, can we go to the next slide, please? Um, this is some of the success stories uh, that have happened at DUT. Um, one of the past students is now working at the Westville Correctional Services. She's a manager at the IT department there. Uh, one student got employed recently and um, is working in a private sector. Uh, I will not mention the names of the companies for, for the other students. And we've had like three students who have who are doing some who have done their advanced diploma. Advanced diploma is like your BTEC. So they've done their advanced diploma, they've passed it, they have graduated, but one is still uh, doing his advanced diploma. And um, one of, of our former students is working as a software developer in Umshanga area. Um, okay, um, three minutes left, oh, thank you to uh, Zulu. Um, one, one former student is working as a software developer in the Musgrave area. Um, can we go to the next slide, please? I think I'm done now. Oh, thank you very much, Siabo Maria Lebuha in course. I'm so sorry. I feel like I was just rushing through this and the sign language interpreter was just <laughs> struggling a bit. My apologies. I know it's not fair. Thank you very much for the opportunity. Okay, thank you, Sandy Le, for a beautiful presentation. And my sincere apologies for addressing you as the principal sign language interpreter of DUT. My apologies. And I would also like to thank you for being patient despite technical issues that we have experienced today. Uh, now, 
I would like to hand over to my colleague, Ms. Londe Kanjangase, to facilitate the Q&A session to close out the day's program. Over to you, Londega. You muted yourself, we can't hear you. <laughs> Oh, sorry about that. I'm so sorry. Um, thank you so much, Tulufelo. We will now take questions from the floor. Uh, please indicate um, if you would like to address a question by raising your hand, uh, wait to be prompted before unmuting your mic or turning your video on and making your contributions. Um, it seems like on our question in A, we have uh, something. Oh yes, uh, we have a question from Chapa. Um, uh, I will read the question. Um, thanks Asanda for your presentation. Uh, question, have you considered about um, deaf interpreter? Because deaf interpreter is also a good tool for university level. Would you consider in, in your next presentation about a deaf interpreter? Thank you. Uh, I'm not too sure if Ms. Sander Kajo would like to um, answer that question. Uh, yes, sure. Sorry, I was trying to type in. Am I audible? Yes, you are audible. I'm not, okay. Yes, thank you. Um, I, I just typed, I was trying to type in, in response to Jabbar Mohammed's uh, question. No, in my Can't hear you, Asanda. That is a it, it seems like we have lost uh, Ms. Asanda. Uh, any support that is available to ensure that deaf learners uh, succeed, I'm, I'm sure any university will appreciate, even if it means it's it, it deaf interpreters, whether deaf or hearing. I, I don't think that is the, that should be the question. Whatever support that is available, uh, whatever uh, program that is there to ensure that our deaf learners uh, become a success, I'm sure will be welcome. Thank you. Um, thank you so much, uh, Ms. Asanda Kajwa. Are there any questions from the, from the floor? Uh, if you have any questions, please feel free to raise your hand or write in a Q&A. Thank you. Um, it seems like we don't have um, any questions from the attendees. Uh, if there are no questions, then um, that brings us to the end of today. Uh, please join us tomorrow at 12. Um, have a lovely afternoon. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.